Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop. This is Todd with Industrial Comfort. Today I'm going to show you how to build this router sled with dust collection so that you can flatten your wood slabs and boards. Now you can go out and spend hundreds if not thousands on a setup like this. Today I'm going to show you how to do it for less than $200 and I'll put all the links in the description where you can buy all the hardware for this. So let's get started. So the first part, and also the hardest part of this project, is going to be making the base plate for the router. So I have a 2 by 24 inch of acrylic. It's a half inch thick. The first thing I'm going to do is create uh, essentially the outline of the, of the router base plate that we're going to create. And to do that, I need to make sure that I have enough width around the entire edge to ensure that I can put the channel in place that will serve to hold the brushes in place for the dust collection, all the while making sure that these rollers that are going to go on the slide rails are put together in a way that is as close as possible um, to one another. So the idea here is that you want a, as small a surface area as possible. As the smaller the surface area, the closer you'll be able to get to the edge and the wider and longer the board you'll be able to uh, to flatten. Now for this project I have a Bosch 1617 variable speed. So I went ahead and I bought an extra plunge base that I'm going to use for this router base so that I don't ever have to take it off again. Um, one other thing that I would note here is that when I put everything in place to mark the holes I'm going to use the plastic base that's here that came with the plunge router but I'm going to remove it before I mount it to the base here as it'll give me roughly an extra quarter of an inch of plunging depth once I remove this. So um, let's get started. We'll go ahead and mark everything out and then we'll begin the drilling process. Okay, so I've made some markings on this uh, piece of acrylic and as I mentioned, I wanted to make sure that I had a border that was going to be wide enough to create the channels for the brushes. So I've measured out three quarters of an inch and created, again, this three quarter inch channel that we'll drill out in a future step. I have also added space on the other end and I'm actually probably going to tighten this up a little bit for... Um, the adapter for the dust collection hose. Now in this case I'm using a two and a half inch hose that's a standard shop vac size. And what I'm going to then do, and I'll show you how to do this, is I'm going to align these to the corners where I've created this edge channel for the brushes. And as I mentioned, I wanted to get this as tight as possible. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put the router base right in the middle. Now make sure that you plunge this down based on whatever router plate you have to make sure that you have enough room for your hands in addition to the uh, exhaust pipe here for your vacuum. And this this all looks about good. I think what I'm probably going to end, end up doing is bringing this line in a little bit more um, so that um, we can tighten things up. Now I mentioned before that the closer things are the closer to the edge on either plane you'll be able to get. Now in this case, the rods are going to be going through the center here, so it doesn't really matter um, how long it is on this side of the the roller pipes because it's, it's not going to affect how far over we move. So um, what I'm going to do now is load this up with double-sided tape and then I'm going to use a pre-cut board. So once I put these in place, I measured the gap, which in my case for this particular base is six and three quarter inches. So I'm going to put the board in place and I'm going to clamp it. Now, this is super important. Not only do these rollers need to be aligned or else they will not roll smoothly on the pipes, but they also have to be perfectly parallel to one another. So if the pipes are angled like this, your rollers are going to jam up as the pipes come together. And conversely, on the backside, as the pipes diverge, these things are going to get stuck because they're going to run out of room to roll. So you have to make sure that they are perfectly parallel with one another and then perfectly parallel between the sets here. Okay, so I've got the placement of the rollers here, and you'll notice that I've got the pipes, and you can see how smoothly they roll. What I'm going to do now is just flip this upside down on both ends so that I can 
put the double-sided tape on before we flip this around again. Okay, so we're gonna carefully turn these around and place them right in the corners. Okay, we're going to press these down. You want to make sure that the pipes roll freely. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Okay, with these now mounted in place, I mentioned that I had a board that I measured out to the appropriate oops, width that we were looking to achieve. Now, the reason I'm doing this and the reason that I'm going to clamp this in place is that I don't want, once, once I start using the punch to create the location for the holes that I'm gonna drill, I don't want any movement at all as that'll create a problem a little bit further on. Now the nice thing about these particular rollers is that the screw holes go all the way through. So what I'm going to do in this particular case is use a 3 16 inch punch and I'm just gonna drop it in, and I'm gonna tap it into each of these locations to mark our holes. Okay, so I got some double-sided tape on the bottom of the plunge base. Now I realized that the plastic that was covering this before that I said I was gonna use to help mount was uh, covering the holes that I need to use to get through to mark the location. So I'm going without the plastic base. I'm just gonna get this in the position that I want it. And again, it doesn't, doesn't have to be perfect. And uh, slide this over a little bit. Now I'm gonna try a novel technique to try to mark the holes. Now I have a one inch eighth um, bit here and the location of these holes doesn't allow me to tap it with a hammer because the shell of the, the plunge case is in the way. So I'm gonna heat this up with a torch and then I'm gonna drop it into the hole hoping that it's gonna melt the plastic and reveal the location where I need to drill. So let's give it a shot. <laughs> All right, let's remove the plunge base and see if it worked. Okay, with all of the locations marked for drilling, I'm gonna trim the acrylic down to size. Now, using the particular configuration I have here, it is seven and nine sixteenths inch wide. Lengthwise, we're measuring it out at 17 and a half inches. So the first hole I'm going to drill is for the router base, which is going to allow the uh, spoil board bit to pass through the base here. So I'm using my uh, shop smith with a two and an eighth inch hole saw. I'm going to wind it down to a relatively slow speed and uh, cut it out. Now for the side with the dust collection, I'm gonna use a 67 millimeter or two and five eighths inch hole dip. As you can see, these hole saws really make quick work of this acrylic. Okay, for the next step here, we have to drill out all the holes that we marked earlier. And so because the hardware we're using is M6, I am using a nine thirty seconds inch drill bit to go through and drill all these holes. Because the hardware is M4 to mount the plunge base to this router base here, I'm using a 3 16 inch bit. Again, the bolt size will uh, differ based on your plunge base or your router base, depending on what style you decide to use. So I'm gonna drill these out and then I'm gonna countersink because I'm using a flathead bolt. Okay, for the last step in the base plate for the router, we're gonna cut a perimeter 
around the edge of this base plate that we're going to use to insert the brushes that are going to serve as the sort of shroud or the shoe for the dust collection. Now the curve of the blade is an eighth inch or the width of the blade and so too are the brushes. So we'll just take a pass on either side and then we'll flip it over and do the same thing all around. And then we'll be done with the base plate. We'll be able to mount everything together and then get to work on the rest of the table. So I forgot to mention the blade height is half the thickness of the half inch um, piece of acrylic. So we've got it raised a quarter inch. I also have the fence set to a quarter inch out. Um, that will give us enough space for the pan head style bolt underneath. And um, we're ready to start assembling. For this next step, I've got these three inch um, high garage door brush sweeps. And what I'm gonna do is just fit them into the channel that we just cut. And we're gonna use a wire cutter like this. I, I've never cut these before, so I'm gonna see if this works. I'm uh, just gonna mark it here and uh, see if it, if I can just trim this. Okay, so uh, the nice thing about using a wire cutter is that it actually crimps at the same time, so you're not gonna lose many of these hairs. And we're gonna use kind of a, a pinwheel style um, approach here. All right. Okay, I'm to the point where I'm ready to assemble the dust shoe. Um, again, with this uh, three inch brush from a garage door seal. Now, there are a couple different ways that I can put this in place. I can use um, any sort of glue. You can use epoxy, you can use caulking. I'm gonna end up using hot glue because it sets up really quickly, it's easy to use, and it provides a really strong bond. It is worth noting, do not use a mini glue gun for this. It will not generate enough heat to keep the glue liquid long enough. So use something that's got a minimum of a 100 watt heating element. So also have a small flathead screwdriver on hand so that you can push the uh, brush in place as we uh, assemble. So what I'm gonna do is just, I'm gonna put this in place. I wanna get the spacing correct and I'm gonna line up the end piece here just so that I know exactly where things need to be. And I'm gonna lay down this in place and I'm just going to use the screwdriver to make sure everything is seated as deeply as possible. Okay, so the last step in assembling the base for the router here is to put the um, dust collector flange onto the base here. And so what I'm gonna do is, as I mentioned, I'm gonna screw it in place using these screws, which I'm gonna pass through the holes I've drilled. Now, I'm gonna go an extra step in adding some caulking around the edge here just to provide for a bit of an extra seal. This is an optional step. Um, I also don't love the fact that these are pretty thin bolts holding on this dust flange, which is gonna probably have a lot of force as we're moving the uh, base across the workpiece. So I'm just gonna apply some sealant or caulk to this, to the bottom of this flange, help provide um, a better airtight seal and just add another layer of adhesive. All 
I've gone ahead and mounted the side rails, which are 20 millimeter by 1200 millimeter long rails. And I'll put a link in the description for where I bought these on Amazon. And I've also mounted them, you'll notice, on one inch high blocks that I made from a piece of two by four. And I did this so that I could get the appropriate height off the deck here to accommodate not only the three inch dust shoe, but also larger pieces of wood that I'm going to flatten. In order to connect the cross rails to the side rail carriers here, I used the extra acrylic we had from the original sheet to cut out a one and three quarter inch width piece of acrylic to match the width of these carriers here by 11 and a quarter inches long. Now this will match my configuration for the base plate that I created. Yours may uh, differ based on the configuration that you come up with. I've then drilled out holes that correspond to the holes here in these sliders. And then I've mounted these um, crossbar adapters using some flathead quarter inch hardware with some acorn nuts. And I'll put a, a link in the description for these. Then I'm using the supplied M5 hardware to connect this acrylic to these sliders and then I'll uh, once I have these connected I'll go ahead and mount in the cross rails. As you can see, the results are pretty impressive and for less than $200. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. Thanks for watching.